I love the comments that you guys leave on, on the YouTube videos, uh, but one of the big questions that people always ask is, oh, can you just like land a helicopter anywhere? Sadly, the answer is not everywhere, but there are a lot of places you can land a helicopter. Uh, I'm with Steve from Lone Star Helicopters. We're gonna ask Steve, where can you land a helicopter? But first, I wanna thank Flying Eye Sunglasses for making this flight possible. I only wear Flying Eye Sunglasses in the helicopter, which as of when I'm making this ad is currently down for repairs. No problem. I also wear flying eyes during my normal life. Why? The lenses are shatterproof polycarbonate and they block 100% of UV light. See? No UV. The temples are one millimeter thin and you can do this. Makes them very hard to break. Thin frames make it super easy to put flying eyes on while you're wearing a helmet. And not just motorcycle helmets too. Vikings, astronauts, I'm talking to you. The frames are also super lightweight. It's almost like I'm wearing nothing at all. Flying eyes come in a range of styles that fit all kinds of faces, including this mug. Didn't break. Use the promo code MICA for 10% off. There's a link in the description. Flying eyes. Smooth. Okay, Steve. Yeah. Where can you land a helicopter? In an emergency situation, uh -huh. you can land it anywhere. You don't need a runway, you don't need a road, you don't need a big field. Helicopters are very versatile that way. From a regulatory standpoint, there are some cities or counties who may have landing ordinances. Yeah. And if they do, you're gonna need to talk to the local authorities to find out what do I need to get an, an LZ permit for the day or for the year or whatever it may be? Who are those local authorities? Is that like the cops? Is that like city hall? Who do you talk to? Right, so here in Austin, um, we have a Department of Aviation out of Austin Bergstrom. Okay. And they're the people who you would give a call to and go and get that, that LZ permit. Um, I've had to do that for the Austin Marathon or some other events, uh, construction sites that we were working on where we were bringing the helicopter in there. Essentially what they want is they want to come out and they want to make sure that your operation is safe, that you've thought about you know fire dangers, hazards, yeah. uh, obstacles, things like that. And they want to know what's going on because they are going to get phone calls. Yeah. Other places like here in Travis County, uh, they don't have a landing ordinance. So as long as you as a pilot are flying neighborly, you could pretty much land anywhere you want. I mean, you can land on the lake and go swimming, go fishing. Really? So um, you wouldn't get in trouble if you landed on the lake uh, over here? I would not. Wow, okay. So it really does depend on the laws where you want to land. And also, you need approval from the property owner, right? That's like if you're landing on somebody's property, you have to like <laughs> make sure it's cool, right? That's right. If it's in the city of Austin, uh, because it's within the city limits, you're also going to need their approval as well. Private property or not, believe it or not. But out here in the county... By the way, call me crazy. It looks like we're making an approach somewhere. <laughs> Where are we landing? So we're making an approach into one of my customers' house here right off of Lake Travis who just happens to have a helipad. Dude, what a helipad. Also, I feel like this looks like a very Texas-style helipad. Mm. This looks like... A live what it zone. Should, yeah, the live zone everything, it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Landing on the helipad, there's the spectacular house over there. This is what people imagine when they think about having a helicopter. Right. You just take off from where you are and go to where you want. That's right. That's the coolest, man. Hey, where are we going? So we're going to the iconic Salt Lick Barbecue in Driftwood, Texas. So that's just going to be southwest of uh, downtown Austin. Uh, they've been around since the 1800s. By the way, I'm going to quickly point out that uh, we're flying like uh, total badasses. Whee! <laughs> See, this is some of the fun you can have in a helicopter. Yeah.
<laughs> Are the people here uh, used to this? Yeah. Is this like a common sight? They love it. Everything's a little bit different in Texas. It is. Bigger, more Bigger, spectacular. More, hosp uh, more hospitable. Yeah. Well, we did, okay, so important topic. Favorite uh, meat from Salt Lake? Hey, man, it, it's all good. I, It's all good. I feel like the right really answer is. in Texas is usually brisket. Yeah, but, uh, well, there, there's that. I like the sausage and the chicken and... Texas-shaped swimming pool. It's not on camera, but trust me, somebody made their swimming pool in the shape of Texas. Oh, it's amazing. I could take you over and show you a swimming pool that looks like a uh, guitar. Uh, really? Yeah. Wow. By the way, how long a flight are we looking at? Uh, to the Salt Lake, we're looking at 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Yeah. How long would that be if you were in a car? About an hour from Lago Vista. Yeah. About an hour and a half. Once again, the power of the helicopter. <laughs> so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come in and uh, say hi to my buddy who's captaining a boat on Lake Travis. They're having a birthday party for a 16-year-old who's an inspiring helicopter pilot. And I thought we'd drop in and say hello. You know, when I was young, there were a couple of moments that really shaped my relationship with helicopters. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing for this 16-year-old, uh, maybe this will be similar. I hope so. <laughs> Can I be presumptuous? Sure. May I take the controls for a moment? Absolutely. I was waiting for you. <laughs> You've got the controls. I have the controls. You've got the controls. Oh, that's nice. Look at me flying through Texas. This is great. Uh, so we're going to land at Salt Lake. And uh, do you have to call ahead? Do you have to do anything? Or do you just show up? The answer is no. <laughs> uh -huh. We show up. My pilot brothers and sisters come in there so much that they actually built us two helipads in their vineyard uh -huh. that's lighted for day and night takeoffs. All right, so uh, we're coming up on the Salt Lake. If you don't mind, I'll take it from you. And you I'll have take the controls. There. I've got the controls. Descending from the heavens for barbecue. <laughs> Living the dream. All right, where's our target? Uh, oh, this place with all these people? Or? No, no, it's actually behind us. I'm just doing an orbit to lose some altitude. Gotcha. Make it a little bit more comfortable for us and show off a little bit of the area in of Driftwood where the Salt Lake is. When I, when I was looking at my, uh, my landing area doing my high reconnaissance, I noticed another helicopter already there. Oh. Will be number two. Uh. So uh, one of the things I'm looking at when we're landing here is I'm looking I'm looking for where the wind is because we like to land we don't have to but we have a great advantage to landing into the wind from an aerodynamic standpoint. Yeah. I'm looking for obstacles, power lines, trees, big towers we talked about. <laughs> Birds. Uh, yeah, the type of terrain that I'm having to deal with, especially in an emergency situation. Um, and then I'm just looking for you know where's the best way to uh, enter and exit from. And then, you know, depending on the condition of my landing pad, we just do a normal, nice approach into the area. This all looks very stable. Matter of fact, I think that helicopter right there, that 44, I gotta look at the tail number. I think that's the very first R44 I ever flew. Really? That Mike Kilo. Oh, it's like a reunion. It is Mike Kilo. Yep. Now you'll notice that they have their doors off because that's a Raven 1. Oh. And they don't have air conditioning. No AC in that bad boy. This is a better landing pad up here because it's a little bit higher, especially after it rains. It can get pretty soggy down there. Yeah. So. All right. All right, so we're gonna shut down, go get some barbecue. Really quick, uh, I'd like to thank Flying Eye Sunglasses for making this little trip possible. If you like these sunglasses that I can easily take off and put back on again, check out Flying Eyes. There's a link in the description below. If you use the uh, promo code MICA, you'll get 10% off. Okay, let's, uh, let's go get some barbecue. All right.